Um, okay. Okay. Hey. Good evening. <laughs> Hello. Welcome, everybody. Um, so, uh, thank you very much for coming to our online talk for how to go plastic free without spending more. And we are very excited to be uh, joining up with um, our pledge tonight, who you're going to hear about after our little presentation. Um, so from our pledge, we have Rachel and Alice and um, plastic free Hackney is me, Daisy and Bettina. So Bettina, do you want to, um, shall we do the Mentimeter? Yes, so we're gonna start, um just with a little, a quick question. So this is quite a fun little poll and it'll then come up and um, show everything. So we've got a quick question. So you'll get, you'll get a link. And then if you click on the link, then you'll get like a fun graphic then, which will be the answer to what everybody on the question has asked. I didn't explain that very well, did I? <laughs> it's, it's technically seamless. <laughs> <laughs> but um, the Mentimeter is coming now. Um, and the question is, what is the trickiest thing that you find um, like plastic free? So you can sort of answer it in this Mentimeter thing and then it will come up with a lovely graphic that we can all see at the end. Um, it's just a bit of fun. If the room change wasn't fun enough. <laughs> um, so is the Mentimeter? Yes, well, in true form, it's not, there we go. I've got it. Sorry about that. Share screen. Here we go. Is that working? Yes. Ta -da. Yeah. So what you need to do if you want to join in is go to menti.com and then you see at the top it's got that code. So you enter that code. Um, so 25864339 and then you type in your answer and then as it's as people fill in the answer, this screen will populate. And then maybe we can see if we can help you out on those things, if we can find find a way. So milk, there we go. Um, uh, sorry, would it be possible to share a direct link within the chat? Yes. Sure. Thank you very much. Cosmetics, yep. So milk, um, obviously there's a milkman now, so, you know, like back in the 80s. Um, you can get milkman out. It is more expensive and it's probably not in every area, but yeah, milk is now. Oh, oh yay, coming in. Um, an actual good deodorant. Well, we've got a workshop that can. <laughs> uh, um, facial moisturizer. Oh, same workshop. Um, uh, there's actually, I really like a brand called Sheer Alchemy, S H E A. Alchemy, um, and they have a stall on Broadway Market, but they also sell online. And she makes all lots of um, cosmetics, like facial moisturizers. She makes like an SPF one and stuff. Um, and they come in like metal tins. Um, and I think they're they're really great products. So they are. I'll, I'm gonna um, I'm gonna pop them in the chat. So there's a link for sheer alchemy in the toothpaste. So toothpaste is. Um, I actually just saw something on Instagram today, which was toothpaste in a metal tube. It, um, but what I've started using, and I actually bought them for my kids. I don't know how successful with the kids it's going. Um, um, but I use these things called Denta tabs, which are like a little, they look like a little aspirin and you chew them with the water from your mouth. It sort of foams up and then you brush your teeth and that's, and that's it. And it comes in a cardboard box. Um, which I, they, it sort of takes to get a bit, well, I mean, after a couple of times you get used to it. It's not as foamy as traditional ones, but it's it's foamy enough. Um, and I quite like using it. And it's also it's also uh, very exciting because it, it includes fluoride and yeah, some of the absolutely. plastic free yeah. options don't include fluoride. Yeah, and my teeth, they need the fluoride. Um, spontaneous takeout food. I mean, yeah, the spontane spontaneity is where, zero waste do not meet um <laughs> that is the problem i think spontaneity can also be sort of seen as convenience and yeah yeah it's a tricky one but um i mean for sort of takeout stuff tupperware you know you can take a tupperware to most places and they're happy um uh yeah uh, and some places do um like a tiffin box that you can take and return yeah 
Jabba Drop, which is local to here. Yes. Spontaneous coffee. I mean, I would argue with a spontaneous coffee that it doesn't really, you know, drinking a cup of coffee doesn't really take that long. So you could ask just to have it there, you know, and just sort of. Yeah. Or bring a keep cup. Five minutes and just go, you know what, actually, I'm not in a rush. I'm going to have my coffee and enjoy the, you know, how much it costs, three, four, five pounds, whatever. Ooh. And I enjoy it and I'm going to sit down and I'm going to just spend five minutes because really it doesn't, it's not like a long drink. Um, vegan uh, grocery items. Yeah, I mean, other than vegetables, um, yeah, the vegan stuff is very packaged. Um, yeah. Oh, I like this. Tavish is doing some nice <laughs> style. He written it. Candles? What does it say? Candles. Candles. Amazing. I'll say. I'll just say a couple of other things. I know that um, you can get milk um, in one of the shops that we've worked with. You can get refill milk. So there mm. are dispensers now. I think it's On Guard Dairy that will do a fill up um, mm. of the refill dispensers. Um, so yeah. you can take a bottle and return that. Um, and I'm going to just say that we'll come back to kids' party products later. That's something that we'll um, yeah. mention. We won't have the answer yet, um, but we will mention that. Yeah. Sure. Yes, that isn't disgusting. So Sheer Alchemy, she does a really good one, actually. Um, I mean, it's sort of difficult when you're thinking like entire families, like entire bodies. But um, if you're just thinking like face, that's quite good. There is one that I thought was disgusting as well and I didn't use and just went all weird i think the ones where they're like zinc really zinky they're quite yeah yeah so um we've got a good suggestion for uh pet food uh to use uh food in cans so for cat food there's a brand judith is saying there's a brand which is called yara which is even organic mm -hmm. um excellent shall we should we move on to our presentation and this is very useful and we shall come back to some of these and if you have come up with um something that you're looking for plastic free that we haven't um covered then pester us in the chat in the questions and stick your hand up at the end and we shall come back to it we yes. are not, we're not ducking away from hard questions no and also after this we will send out so i'll send out a document with like as much as I know about everything on that list for alternatives. So, um, yeah. Okay, Bettina, do you wanna, do you wanna hit, I share hit my go? Screen. Okay. So, um, but we'll start and we'll come back to everything. Okay. Sharing, can everyone see that so far? Can everyone see that? Yeah, everyone can see it. Great. Great. Uh, so um, this is, uh, so Plastic Free Hackney is, um, uh, we are a campaign group who have been um, running since 2018. If you want to flick onto the next slide, Bettina. Um, uh, that's Bettina, that's me. Um, and uh, the group was um, uh, founded by Bettina. And I jumped on board shortly afterwards when she did a um, in Instagram posting with a kind of um, modest uh, challenge of how about we make Hackney go plastic free? And I said, yeah, that sounds great. Let's let's do it in a fortnight. Mm -hmm. um, uh, so we are what's known as a um, what what is a CIC a. Yeah. Community interest company. A community interest company, which basically means that everything that we're doing is being reinvested back into um, the community. Um, so it's sort of like an easy setup of being a charity. Um, and we, uh, our premise is to engage with the local communities in Hackney, um, talking to people about living sustainably, kind of through the medium of, re of reducing single use plastics, um, and, uh, and trying to be very um, practical about it. Uh, so if you want to go to the next slide, Bettina. Mm -hmm. um, uh, so we, we have a kind of personal aversion to the, the whole kind of land of everything being matchy matchy and perfect. And look, I just went and bought lots of mason jars and everything's really pretty. And all of that kind of, I don't know, um, there's, there's very much a sort of a lifestyle 
image of sustainable living that is, I think, well, really counterproductive to um, to actually to to the cause and and making it um, making it accessible to everybody. Um, one of the one of the things that we do is we run a monthly litter pick, um, which we've been doing for the past three years, and we meet on the last Sunday of every month. Um, at 10 a.m. outside the Princess of Wales pub um, and we have had up to we've had up to 80 um, volunteers coming along where we just haul out absolutely huge quantities of um, single-use plastics um, and everything else and unfortunately it all um, ends up going to the incinerator that is what happens to your um, to your black bin waste your residual waste in Hackney it is incinerated um, and all of the stuff that we collect is deemed to be contaminated because as I'm sure you all know your plastic and your recycling materials have to be clean when they're collected because essentially the, the um, companies are collecting a commodity that can be sold on and if you're looking at an image like that you know you're not really going to sell that coke bottle floating in the center of the, the canal to anybody else. Um, so if you skip to the next slide that was after two hours so having looked pretty hideous um that's how the canal should look um and we also we've uh, recently renamed um the events to, as pollution picks rather than litter picks which is sort of sounds like something um that why why does the change of language matter because it's important to notice to to recognize and and label the fact that that is plastic at a different point in its pollution cycle um and littering is something that is um quite a politicized term that the manufacturers use to put the onus of responsibility on the people who've dropped the item and we very much want to focus that responsibility responsibility back to the people who are making it um, so there are lots of happy pollution pickers um, before setting off, you see their empty bags. Um, okay, and next slide, Bettina. Um, this is Bettina um, in the um, round chapel, old school rooms, when we were running um, one of our workshops in person, which we used to do, and we hope very much to start doing again in September. Um, so here we are running a cleaning products workshop. Um, and it's basically about sort of demystifying the things that we buy and that we have in our homes and just saying so much of the things that we have sort of been sold to believe are essential parts of our everyday life actually aren't. And uh, there is a great benefit to going back to really simple old fashioned ways of doing things that aren't necessary. They're not time consuming. They are much cheaper and they are much more um they generate much less waste, um, much healthier for you in terms of um, internal um, air pollutants and um, stop buying the stuff basically, and they're much cheaper. Um, so it's a, it's a win on all the accounts. So next slide please, Bettina. Uh, here, as you can see, is a very happy person who has just made her own um, body scrub. Uh, so it's a really nice way of um, uh, just, for, thinking a bit more creatively around, I mean, there's a practicality in the fact that you end up with products that you can then use at home, but it also sort of, um, we kind of like to use it as a catalyst to help people start thinking around what it is that they're depending on at home. Actually, we can really be much more resourceful and creative and thoughtful about what it is that we do. And there's a real joy in making your own stuff. And, you know, Harbu sucks to the people who are generating the plastic. And which, which leads on perfectly to this film, which is going to instantly work, um, uh, which is a very nice short Friends of the Earth film about um, plastic pollution and, and why it matters. So Bettina, you're on mute at the moment, so I don't think anyone can hear your sound. You're still on mute. There we go. Sorry, I, you can't find anything when you're in the thing. No, you can't find anything. Well done. Well found. Thanks. In a little over a century, plastics have transformed the way we live. From wind turbines to aircraft wings, they've helped build the modern world. Today, the latest versatile, durable plastics help us to do more with less. 
reducing energy use, emissions and waste. And the fresh innovation and infrastructure they bring enables the creation of new jobs. But there's a problem. 40% of plastic in Europe is single-use packaging. And since the start of mass production in the 1950s, we humans have produced 8.3 billion tonnes of plastic in all, weighing the same as around 80 million blue whales. And the majority has ended up in landfill, incinerated or polluting the planet. But the problem starts way before the plastic reaches our bins and rivers. Over 99% of plastics come from chemicals sourced from oil and gas production. The more plastics we make, the more oil and gas we use. So it's no surprise that many of the oil and gas companies behind the climate crisis are investing heavily in plastics production. Meanwhile, the expansion of oil and gas production has led to a dramatic fall in the cost of raw materials for plastics, and output is on the rise. Cheap fracked gas is also driving huge new investments in America and worldwide, with $164 billion funding 264 new facilities or expansion projects in the US alone. And with a wave of investment in China, Europe and the Middle East, the global infrastructure for a new generation of production is well underway. So, is the coming increase in plastic production sustainable? And are the benefits worth the cost? There are few bigger long-term threats to our planet than greenhouse gases. These gases are already increasing global temperatures, melting ice caps, raising sea levels, and threatening coastal cities. Right now, the production of plastic is responsible for 5% of global emissions. And in the years ahead, the harmful gases from plastic production are set to grow almost 300%, meaning it will soon be a bigger contributor to climate change than aviation and shipping put together. In the last decade, humans produced more disposable plastic than in the entire 20th century, and we can all see the results. Yet the leading oil and gas companies plan to increase plastic production by an extra 40%. And this is a problem for all of us. Even if we could recycle every last piece of plastic we use, the damage caused by making it can't be undone. So as well as tackling the growing crisis of plastic waste, we also need to confront what happens at the start of the plastic's life cycle. The time to act is now. Because when the world's new plastics factories become a reality, they'll threaten the future of the planet with accelerated climate change. Friends of the Earth is working to change all of this for good. Join us and be part of the solution. So, there we go. So I think um, that's basically the reason why we're kind of here. You know, there are just so many issues with plastic pollution. And whilst it's a massive systemic change that needs to take place, um, I think that, you know, if we all, we all want to reduce it in our personal lives and that sort of sends messages out, um, you know, to sort of companies that are selling this, that we don't want it. But, you know, we live in a we live in the age of plastic, you know, the Anthropocene is now what it's being called. And so this workshop is basically how you can do it personally. So, so that's what we're going to do now, sort of go through our sort of top 10 tips for how you can reduce plastic in your own life. Um, so yeah, so we're straight on to tip number one, um, which is take it slow. So like I said, you know, we live in a plastic age. Um, you know, I don't think any of us probably can remember a time when plastic wasn't just so ubiquitous, so everywhere. Um, and so my first tip would really be to take it slow in your journey to sort of move away from plastic. You know, if you try and do it um, in cold, you know, sort of go cold turkey, right? I'm gonna go plastic free in a week. You're just setting yourself up to fail, really. It's, it's, it's just too entrenched in our lives. So, you know, by taking it slow, if you kind of think to yourself, you know, I'm just gonna make one sustainable change a month. You know, if that's, if you think of that one item on that initial list or, you know, one thing that you know that you really use a lot of, you think, right, I'm just gonna make this one change um, a month, but I'm gonna continue that change. And once I'm happy with that change, then I'm gonna move on to the next one. You know, you just gotta think of it as a journey and we're just going forwards. Um, so just kind of small sustainable steps. And, you know, you know, you will slip up, you know, that you will think, oh, I was doing so well and, you know, you know, mistakes happen, you know, perfection is the enemy of good. We're just trying to sort of just be a bit more mindful and go forwards um, and just go forwards in that sort of, 
journey to plastic free. And I think it's also a sort of a mindset as well. You can look at it two ways. It's also a mindset to sort of our consumption, you know, that everything is so quick at the moment, you know, the emails come in and it's like, buy me and this sale is on and ugh. we're just bombarded by images all the time, which is just, just this fast level, high levels of consumption. So again, like just take it slow, just kind of slow down and, you know, really think, do I need this? Do I want this? Um, and I think it sort of, it, it starts to become easier um, the sort of further along you get. So that's my first tip. Um, by the way, I can't see anything other than this slideshow. So if there's anything, I can't see if anyone's put their hand up or anything. So Daisy. No, no, no nobody's put their hand up. Or if anyone's looking like, what are you talking about? Like yeah, no, they're all, they're all obeying at the moment but 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 probably the best way of communicating with us is uh is popping things in the chat and if you put things in the chat as we go along and if patina says something that you're like really i want to go back on that and get some more information put it in the chat and we shall come back to it yes okay so next um so next up is the basics um so this is also the basics of the kind of the, the we've all heard there were the three R's and now there's the th five R's. So we're taking the R's further down the road. Um, and the first one that we're going to talk about in basics is refuse. So we've also got reduce, reuse, recycle and rot. But refuse is just a really simple, easy thing that we can do. You know, it's all that daily pointless plastic that just comes into our lives. It's, you know, water bottles, coffee cups, bags, straws, I think have been banned now, actually. I mean, and they're sort of quite small but anyway all those freebies all that kind of stuff that we can actually just say no to um you know and something like a tote bag which we all must have I mean I've got if, if you don't have a tote bag just I will give you a tote bag because I have so many of them I don't know where they come from I think they're like gremlins and you add water to one and you suddenly have a lot um so you know and they just pack up so small and they fit in anything um so it's just kind of it's it's just making sort of these new habits that you're going to remember you know it's taking your, you know you always remember to take your mobile and your keys and your phone and so now it's just a new one where you've got your tote bag for those kind of off the cuff purchases or a water bottle so you know you know you don't have to get those things at least when you're out and about um and perhaps you know you can set yourself a new rule just you know we're now we're now in plastic free july which is part of the reason why we're doing this talk now so maybe just start out in plastic free july saying no cup, no coffee. You know, if I don't have my reusable cup, and I know it's trickier now, this is the issue with COVID where people have kind of, you know, they have kind of used it as an excuse now that they don't, they, they can't take your reusable because of COVID. Um, and there are sort of safe ways to use your reusable. City to Sea have a, um, have a, a whole thing on it. Um, so it is possible. Um, and actually it's sort of slightly untrue that you can spread COVID on, on things like this as well but yeah maybe set yourself like a little challenge no cup no coffee whatever it is you know just say to yourself I'm not going to do this and then all these things just become habits um and so what we're just trying to do is change habits go from sort of our old bad habits to sort of better habits um the next tip would be know your enemy um if you know what you throw away you can avoid you can avoid throwing away that thing as it were um, making waste more visible makes you more conscious of what you throw away. So what I think um, was quite helpful for me is just to kind of limit the amount of bins, you know, whether that's like in your workplace or at home, if you just kind of have three bins in one location, say in the kitchen, um, and you have to throw away all your waste from there, it makes it really obvious what it is that you're throwing lots away of. Um, the only exception to this um, would be in the bathroom, because as we know, only the three P's should be going down the toilet. Um, yes, lots of lots of blockages, lots of fatbergs, lots of disgusting things. So yeah, but you want to also make sure that you know you are separating that waste. You know, maybe you have one sort of dry bin in the bathroom, and that you can then transfer that to the sort of main bin, so you can see what it is that you're throwing away. You know, is it just tons and tons of shower gel or shampoo bottles? Um, or all of that stuff also, you know, that can be recycled as well, that often gets forgotten because it's in the bathroom bin. Um, so yeah, um, so then what we're gonna start with. Can I jump in? Um, with, uh, so there was, a, there was another point that um, 
it's a good Hackney Council point, which is you must always use your green bag for your recycling. So if you ever if you ever put recycling in a black bag, it's yep. always going to be thrown away. So they they're not going to check the inside. That is one of the reasons why the um, recycling bags are, are thin and transparent so that they can see the contents of the inside. So always think about that with your recycling. Um, and I've got a good food waste stat, Bettina, when you get to food waste. Um, so, you know, when we were thinking about that sort of, you know, the five R's, so what we're going to start with now when we've got, our, we've got our bins, you know, we've got our three bins, we've got our general waste bin, um, residual waste, which will go to the incinerator, we've got our compost bin, which I'll come to as well, our food waste, and then we've got our recycling bin. So we'll start with recycling. Oh no, back, don't look at that, don't look. Um, so. Recycling is it's it's sort of a, a good place to start, although eventually, you know, we're hoping to reduce this to um, the council website. So I don't know, you know, some of you may not be in Hackney, but the same applies wherever you are. You know, the council's website is a sort of cornucopia of facts of what you can and can't recycle. Um, also here, if you're in London, one of the seven boroughs that um, your waste is uh, managed by the North London Waste Authority, their website is pretty comprehensive about what they will and will not accept for recycling so um i would have a look at that because i think the problem is you know we've got a really piecemeal recycling system in the uk you know what's acceptable on one side of the road isn't on the other you know if you're in a different borough um and i think you know obviously people move around a lot you know sort of renting and so on and so i think it can become really confusing so i think if you are sort of new to where you are or even if you've been there for years i think it's worth refreshing um, your memory on what you can and can't recycle and you know it's amazing like lots of people that sort of go oh I, you know they're pretty sure are shocked kind of when they go actually I've been chucking this polystyrene in the recycling when you definitely cannot recycle polystyrene for, as an example um, so yeah so you want to sort of avoid contamination in your recycling know that you're recycling it correctly um, and that you're just rinsing it out so it's not you know soiled with um, food waste and so on so, and if you're not, so then we've, we've got our, so we've got our recycling bin. So we're thinking, right, things are going in there. First of all, we want to try and get things out the residual bin into the recycling bin. And then we've got our food waste bin. So Hackney Council and um, a lot of London boroughs and boroughs in the UK do have um, food composting that they will come and collect with your rubbish each week. And it's really important um, that you are Composting, um, so as you've seen this slide for a while now, uh, composting for one year can save global warming gases equivalent to your kettle's yearly CO2 emissions. Um, not that it's so much of an issue in Hackney because our waste is incinerated, although it's still not great. I think people think because food, etc., is, you know, biodegradable that you just think, well, I'll just put it in the bin, you know, if it goes to landfill, it's fine. But the problem is when food rots in landfill, it's um, it's an anaerobic environment. So it doesn't have that oxygen to break it down. So what happens is um, it breaks down anaerobically and that releases methane, which is a really potent greenhouse gas, um, much more potent than CO2, in fact. So, um, and also, you know, it's kind of, you know, it's, it's also a resource. I think what else, what I hope that you take away from this is that also that, you know, we need to start thinking about things as resources and food waste is just another resource. You know, it can be turned into compost and so on. It's just a, a valuable fertilizer. Um, there are different ways that you can recycle your food, um, I guess. So there's home composting. So um, you can get a compost bin from the council. I think they offer subsidized um, fees for compost bins. Um, there's council, the council composting scheme, which I must say I find the easiest, I don't have a garden big enough for a compost pile and so on, so the home compost scheme, or there's community compost schemes, often if you've got a community garden in your area, um, they'll happily take um, your food scraps and so on to add it to their compost bin. Um, and then for the brave hearted, such as Daisy, there are wormeries, um, so these are, you know, which you can have in your house and they don't smell, um, or you have them outside and they but yeah, you have little worms in them. Daisy's better at telling you about wormeries. Um, but yeah, I think if you want to start and you have got a council recycling scheme, that's probably your your best place to start. Wormeries Wormery, Wormery are great um, uh, if anyone's interested because um, they make this amazing kind of, um, it's just, it's really cool. Um, they're, they're not icky. 
Um, and uh, I've got a little garden and a worm root about that big. Um, but uh, you can also get them uh, but that when when you keep them inside but the thing that it that's really good is it makes this incredibly um rich organic matter um yay hey, so rachel's saying thank you rachel is saying it's not icky at all it is an amazing fertilizer um and it's just actually exceptionally cool like there's something about keeping some of i mean i can't do it with all of our waste but we do it with some of it that um just sort of being part of that whole process of seeing what is happening to my food waste and look how long does it take a worm to break this down and oh they're they're lovely mm -hmm. uh, so yeah worms are good um and so i've also um put a link in the chat to um the resources for hackney composting cool um so yeah and then i mean and if your council doesn't have um, a compost scheme actually. Um, the Mayor's London Environment Strategy will stipulate that all London boroughs should be offering this soon. Um, yeah, I know that one it doesn't. Um, and so on top of these kind of these three bins where the majority of waste goes, um, you know, you can sort of take it further. So I have a bag of kind of old textiles, um, you know, like socks that are beyond repair or whatever um which then i sort of take to the textile bins to be recycled to turn into rags um i've got electrical a bag of electrical waste so that's anything with a plug or a wire um shouldn't be going into your bin that should be being recycled in those banks that are around hackney the e-waste bins um um batteries i've got sort of a bag for batteries you know i've got a bag of things that are you know the charity shops that are, you know, obviously maybe my kids have grown out of them. So it's just thinking about waste in a different way and just sort of separating it. So finally, so you've now um, done all of these things. And so after about a week or so, you can sort of do a sort of a bit of a bin audit. Um, and I, there's a, um, I don't know if you've heard of a guy called Daniel Webb. He does an amazing project called Everyday Plastic. So he um, has sort of, I think it's on his website, it's all laid out if you want to do the sort of everyday plastic survey. Um, and he's got great sort of charts and things like that where you can really map it out. But you really just want to see what it is um, that you're throwing most of, you know, what it is you're throwing a lot away of. And so maybe make a list, start with like the first, the top five or the top three um, and start to look for alternatives for those things. Um, and you kind of also, you want to sort of move that waste upstream. So you know, if you think, right, something's going in the residual bin, but can I swap it for a recyclable package? Can I do that first? You know, just kind of try and move that waste upstream until you're not creating that waste. Um, so also, I mean, what's also useful about the food waste by separating that as well as, you know, there's a big problem with food waste. Um, you know, so, you know, buying salad bags and not eating them and food portions being too big um, and having that food waste in one bit you know instead of just chucking the salad bag in the bin it really focuses the mind if you're having to empty that bag into that food bin um and so then maybe you think right this is ridiculous why am i doing this week in week out i'm gonna stop buying them or whatever um so yeah uh then next so the next tip is that we want to use it up so before we start you know deciding right we're going to buy all the new plastic free items we're going to get rid of all this plastic in our house we want to remember that obviously all of these things that we have in our house have been made they all exist and to just throw them away is a waste um and really i hate the waste um so this is kind of the reuse section of the five r's um recycling bit so whatever it is you want to wear it out you know use it up reuse it upcycle it just think of a way that you can sort of keep it out of the bin for as long as possible um you know as daisy sort of touched upon earlier we really don't want people to sort of go plastic free and think of it as a retail opportunity and that you have to buy all this new stuff. Um, it's, it's not an aesthetic. It's, it's really a fundamental shift in a mindset, um, which we all need to embrace going forward, you know, with regards to our model of consumption, you know, we just, we live on a finite planet and we cannot consume at the rate at which we are um, just continuously. It's, it just physically will not work. Physics will not <laughs> allow the world to just it's just going to end um so yeah so what we kind of currently live in um is very much a linear economy we make things um we finish with it it goes straight in the bin we're kind of now moving to this sort of secondary 
recycling economy where you know oh, okay we're buying it, but then we're going to recycle it and that's great um but what we really want to be doing is kind of keeping all of those things out of the bin because it also not only do you keep them out of the bin at the end the kind of life cycle at the beginning is much it's not as it's not as polluting as it was you know with the sort of plastics and the single use and they're just throwing it away all the time um so yeah i mean also there's a sort of practical side um to this as well um that you know whilst you use things up it gives you more time to think about what it is that you're going to replace it with so you know i sort of went through this sort of period of using i don't know i don't know why i used to get all these little all, you know all the little freebies and little hotel things you take all the stuff and the free shampoo so just use up all those shampoos everything so there's none left and in that time you know i was able to think okay well what is it that i'm going to buy next you know am i going to i'm going to try out i found discovered the, from Lush actually that was my first kind of like oh look at all these plastic free options Lush sold a shampoo bar um and so I decided once I used up all of my products I would go to Lush and I would buy a shampoo bar so it makes it kind of much less overwhelming to do it slowly you've got time to research better alternatives um you know it's cheaper because you're doing it sort of stage by stage um you know I also sort of was able to look at things that are produced ethically or didn't contain palm oil um, and things like that. So it just gives you, buys you a bit more time. Um, so simple swap. So this is the kind of, you know, not reinventing the wheel. This is the kind of what we buy in week in, week out. It's the boring bog standard stuff. Um, and we sort of tend to be habitual shoppers. So I guess with this tip, what I'm really saying is kind of step back, you know, step back from that in that supermarket shelf and just kind of have a look um, and see what it is. You know, can you buy pasta in the cardboard box? You know, if you look on the shelf, you know, further back, ah, okay, there's the there's the pasta in the box as opposed to the pasta in the plastic. Like all of those little swaps, um, can you find them just super easy without any sort of effort or research or effort? Um, you know, detergent can be get go in cardboard boxes, you know, single use razor blades, you can get a safe, safety razor instead, um, um, which are a bit more expensive, but they save you money in the long run because they just have blades, which are pennies. Um, and, you know, my ultimate favourite swap, which I wish I'd known about a long, long time ago, are reusable and toxic free alternatives to periods. Um, yeah, which create so much waste. You know, they've got, they just cost a fortune year on year on year um they've got all those sorts of grim chemicals in them and i wish that i'd known about alternatives a long time ago and it was just such a simple swap it was the biggest no-brainer i have had in this entire journey to try and sort of live more sustainably and yeah wouldn't look back um the next one is shopping unpackaged um so I, I imagine sort of once you've done your bin audit, you can probably see that most of your packaging comes from food, um, which everybody I think will agree with. Um, I guess the problem is we shop in supermarkets and whilst they're making big claims about what they're doing in terms of redu reducing their plastic, really they're just tinkering. So this is um, a Greenpeace and the Environmental Investigation Agency this is um, for the last three years, they've been looking at what the supermarkets have been doing in their plastic policies and so on. So um, a few years ago, Iceland came top of the tree. They were sort of, you know, lauded for all their efforts in going plastic free. They were going to, by a certain date, I can't remember what it was, they were going to remove all the plastic packaging. They were going to remove palm oil. They were just seen as amazing. They could do no wrong. Um, I go in there quite a lot. Well, not quite a lot. I go in there sort of if ever I'm passing in Hackney Central, just to have a look. Um, and yeah, I mean, look, they're number 10 this year. Three years later, they've got nowhere. It's, it's, it's just so much talk around the supermarkets. They just, they just, it's just amazing how you can just talk and just not do anything. <laughs> just find it like amazing. Um, and this is just basically what these charts show, you know, how you, how they just move up and down. It's just, you know, they just throw them up in the air and see where they land this year because really their sort of talk is meaningless. So as much as possible, if you can avoid shopping in supermarkets, that will probably reduce the amount of plastic that you use um, by a huge amount. Um, you know, we're sort of always thinking about the demise of the high street and, you know, it's because we're not shopping on them. 
but actually shopping on the high street often results in a sort of plastic reduced experience you know green grocers um you can buy the majority of things in a green grocer plastic free fish munch uh, fish munchers um fishmongers or butchers um you know you can bring your own tupperware into there um they'll happily use that because obviously all this packaging as well costs them money so if, they, if they're not having to use it it's saving them money so they're and the first time you sort of go into somewhere and ask to use your tupperware it can feel slightly nerve-wracking um i am aware of this but i don't know it, it, it's really nice as well because it tends to open up conversations and things like that and you and you see that actually they they don't like using all this packaging either and they would like to see it a bit more like this and it's just habitual and this that and the other so it's just sort of opens up a talking point which is quite nice um you know even in my local deli um so i live in clapton so uh, on chatsworth road there's the deli la pisserie um they even give you a 10 percent discount if you shop with your um own containers again covid has sort of you know it hasn't it hasn't signaled the death knell for all of these things but it's it's made it slightly trickier but obviously now as things open up a bit more um, we should hopefully be going back on track and these things will be available again. Um, so there's also bulk stores which are popping up everywhere. In Hackney, we're super lucky. We've got loads of bulk stores. So these are shops where you can um, you can take your own packaging, um, fill it up and so on. Um, so there is, um, so City to Sea have got an app. Um, so it's, um, so you can just download it onto your phone and it's so as it says here connecting you to places eat drink and shop with less waste um and so this has got loads of different options of where you can buy things packaging free or plastic free um and so i recommend checking it out it's really great um you know if you have to shop at the supermarkets you can try and avoid the plastic you know try and go for the sort of um plastic free options but i'm aware that often they're more expensive, annoyingly, you know, the loose options are more expensive, but you know, you can try and bring your own Tupperware and try and avoid things, you know, sort of buy the biggest option. Um, I mean, you can make a stand and leave your packaging at the checkout um, if you feel brave. Um, what else with regards to shopping? I mean, online shopping is a plastic minefield um, when you're thinking about sort of traditional retailers. Um, and I know COVID sort of made that worse again. Um, so I, I kind of gave up shopping online with sort of, you know, Morrison's and Ocado and all the rest of it. I think my moment was when I think it was Morrison's and they delivered an aubergine and each aubergine was wrapped in like a sort of, it was like a sort of mesh thing that you used to get in airports around like alcohol bottles. It was like packaged, like it was a Fabergé egg and then each was in a plastic bag. And I just had a bit of a breakdown um, and stopped buying things from there. But, you know, there are sort of ways to shop um, online, you know, to sort of get that food delivery that aren't um, full of plastic. So as I mentioned briefly earlier, you know, the Milkman, and I think Milk and More, if you go onto their website, they have got a list of local Milkman. I know in Hackney, there's Morton Dairies and there's um, Parker Dairies. So those are your sort of two local Milkman options. Um, and yes, again, there's an element where it's slightly more expensive, but I do kind of think with some of the things that I buy, it's like a swings and roundabout, like that might be a bit more expensive, but then I get an odd box. So I get a veg box delivered each week and that's cheaper than sort of what I was buying. So it sort of all goes round in a bit of a circle. Um, so yeah, so one of the veg boxes I get is odd box and that the majority of that comes packaging free. Then there's, you know, Riverford, there's lots of box schemes like that. And um, Riverford, I know, have now a specific no plastic um, box. They've also changed their packaging to have, it's not plastic, It's they say it's home compostable packaging, which I'm dubious about, but whatever. They say they'll take it back. They'll, they'll take, so they take the whole box back as well. Um, so it to be reused. Um, you know, even flowers actually. So there is a box scheme called Freddy's Flowers. So if you want to treat yourself to flowers, um, that is plastic free and you return the box and so on. So there are options um, for shopping without waste or plastic. Um, so, I mean, you know, it's no surprise really that we need to cook more based on, based on, the, based on what we're looking at in our bin and the majority of it is sort of packaging. 
but um, you know, it's sort of there's no real escaping the fact that convenience comes wrapped in plastic. Um, if anything, you know, it's 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 the rise of all this plastic packaging that has facilitated that kind of increase in convenience food. You know, from ready meals and takeaways, um, on the go food and drink, it's just really heavily swathed in plastic. Um, so what can we do? We can try and cook more. And I don't, you know, I'm, I don't, I've never, this isn't a picture of me. I have never made one of these pasties. I don't, I've never made anything like that. You know, it's, it's just kind of quick weekday suppers that you kind of have on rotation um, that is kind of cheaper and healthier. And it's just another nice habit. It's nice to sit down at the end of the day with your family and just have a home cooked meal and you can get them involved. Um, um, and yeah, it's, it's, it's an enjoyable experience once you get into the habit. Um, and there are sort of gadgets out there that you can sort of use to cut down on cooking times, like pressure cookers and slow cookers and things like that. You know, there's batch cooking and utilizing your freezer um, to make sure that there's always something that you can cook that's plastic free at the end of the day. Um, and it's the same with a packed lunch, you know, sort of using last night's leftovers um taking that in i mean i suppose recently also again covid wise we've been eating a lot more at home so we haven't been having to take out those lunches so much but um yeah um i don't know and if it really is something that you find hard to do maybe you can try and incentivize yourself um put that money towards something just say right all the money that i save on those lunches i'm gonna i'm gonna put towards a trip away or something like that um but also, you know, I sort of also do like a takeaway. And thankfully, there's um, so there's companies like Deborah Drop in Hackney, which do plastic free takeaways. Um, it arrives in a Tiffin tin, which is great. And they arrive on a bicycle. So it's feels like pretty guilt free. Um, and also takeaways will accept your own packaging as well, your own Tupperware. So um, I have a slight addiction to a local Vietnamese restaurant around here. Um, and they will be happy to take our Tupperware in there. Um, and again, it's one of those things where the first time you feel slightly nervous, perhaps, but after a while, you're they're more than happy, you're more than happy. And it just, it does, I don't know, it feels great to not have a bin full of sort of takeaway stuff. You know, you just put it in the dishwasher and you're done. So, yeah. um, and leading on from that. So now that you're, now that you're in the kitchen, you can start making some stuff yourself. Um, so, you know, somebody was talking about deodorant, so you can make deodorants. Um, all sorts of things. Yeah, I mean, I've been pretty amazed at the amount of things that you can actually make with ingredients from around the home that I've just been blindly buying for years, thinking that, you know, unless I was a scientist in a lab coat, I couldn't possibly know what I was doing. But actually, the majority of the sort of modern day cleaning products and beauty products and so on, a lot of them are just based on a few simple ingredients. And all they've done is substituted out the natural oils for synthetic oils, i.e. fossil fuels, um, to make it cheaper and um, you know they've just kind of yeah they've just added other chemicals and substituted other things so they all they've done is taken away that natural cleaning goodness and added toxic toxic sort of evilness um, and it's it's quite liberating actually making your own products it feels quite sort of empowering to sort of know that I don't I don't need I don't I don't need all this stuff like I, I make one thing and it, and it does a, a multitude of jobs. Um, yeah, it was great. It was quite, I don't know, in lockdown, just kind of like, hey, I've run out of this, but I'm just going to make it myself again. Yeah, I mean, it just, it always loads of sort of unnecessary chemicals. It's obviously plastic free and it feels immensely satisfying. But um, yeah. um, but they shouldn't be overly difficult. The point is not to make it, you know, life extremely hard on yourself there is also refills um in shops for a lot of cleaning products um toilet cleaner washing up liquid are just two of the things that i get refilled at the end of my road um yeah this shouldn't nothing should be a burden this is all kind of good times we're all having good times and we're just doing things that are going to make life easier for ourselves um, right next so stop spending um so this kind of links slightly back to the first I'm just going to interject, Bettina, I think, are you, I wonder if something's touching the microphone on your, okay, I'm stepping away from the machine. Step away from the machine, well done, okay. and go. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, stop spending, um, stop spending, guys. Um, yeah, sometimes I think this should be the first point, it's just, 
obviously not stop spending everybody we need to spend money it's um we're just going to reduce we're thinking back to that five r's and we're just going to reduce the amount we spend um this is a lovely quote by anna lapper um every time you spend money you're casting a vote for the kind of world you want um and i think that's very true i think you know if we vote with our wallets if we say oh we just want all the plastic they're just going to keep making the plastic you know in a time where you can feel as citizens, you can feel quite disenfranchised when you feel like you're not being listened to and no change is happening. Um, and we are seen as consumers. It, it, I, yeah, I sometimes feel like we're not seen as citizens anymore. We're just seen as consumers. Um, and so really, if we're seen as consumers, well, then that's where the power lies. And so how we spend our money is, is a vote every time. Um, so yeah, we just want to sort of choose to avoid overly packaged products, pointless packaging, um, and questioning retailers on all the bad practices, um, just sending a message that we don't want or need all the plastic that's forced upon us. Um, also, there's kind of, you know, social justice issues as well with kind of what we're buying. If things are too cheap, it's often a case that someone has paid the price somewhere. Um, you know, would they sort of you know, I think the Rana Plaza was a really famous incident of that, of uh, women in Bangladesh who were making our clothes um, for sort of fast fashion brands um, who died when the building collapsed. Um, you know, it's kind of, maybe we should pay more than three pounds for a t-shirt or whatever. Um, so they're getting paid more and the building is safe and so on. So there's all the carbon that's embedded in those products as well, um, all the way along the line. So if we can sort of, reduce the amount we buy, um, we reduce all of these things. Um, there's a hierarchy of needs. This is quite good. Um, so this kind of can help you sort of think about how you spend your money and how you kind of can reduce the amount you spend um, on, on the things. Because I think it's very, we live in a kind of, we've, we've just been conditioned that, you know, it's not even a case of needing things, it's wanting things. So if we want something, we can get it. But I think we need to start thinking a bit more about what we need um, rather than want. So this hierarchy of needs kind of sort of spells it out. So initially kind of, right, I really want that new jacket. Okay, well, can I use what I've got? You know, have I already got a jacket that's basically the same jacket, um, possibly with a different style or whatever? Um, or can I borrow that jacket from a friend? Can I swap it? Can I thrift it? I.e., can I buy it secondhand? Um, can I make it? And lastly, can I buy it? Um, yeah, I mean, secondhand swapping, secondhand swapping? Swapping and shopping secondhand. Um, I never used to do at all, really, until a couple of years ago. And um, I'm a full convert now. I really, it's just, it's very satisfying. It's very... Um, well, it's cheap. <laughs> it's much cheaper than buying new things. I think I'm I like I'm shocked at the price of things when I go into a shop now because I'm just not used to it. Um, and it just it just it's just keeping those things out of landfill. It's just keeping things in the world. I mean, there's talking about clothes. You know, I mean, I I, I think it was on the great um, it was on the sewing bee, and they came out with a statistic that you know if we didn't make any new clothes. That we'd still have enough clothes on the planet to feed to clothe like the next was it like four generations or six it was like just something really shocking that actually we're just making stuff all the time and we don't really need it um you know secondhand as well you know i've got two small boys they're really into lego and playmobil and all the plastic things um and so I just have a rule where, yeah, I'm, I am going to buy them those things, but I'm just going to buy them secondhand. I'm going to look on eBay. eBay is your friend for people that are new to the world of secondhand shopping. Um, it's amazing and saves so much money. Um, so it saves me money. The boys get the Playmobil thing. Something hasn't ended up in the bin. They're happy. They don't know it's secondhand. It's new to them. And that's all they care about. Um, yeah. Um, so yeah, stop spending. Um, and finally, my final tip is to get involved. Um, I really do believe that as individuals, we have huge amounts of power, um, but that really comes into its own when we act together. So, you know, can you get involved? Can you see what's happening in your local community? Is there a Friends of the Earth or Greenpeace group? Is there a group such as Plastic Free Hackney, um, you know, that you could sort of volunteer for and spend some time 
with um, and just helping to sort of amplify voices and amplifying those messages of change. Um, you know, even if it's signing a petition or writing to your MP, just small things like that really sort of, you know, build up. I mean, you know, grassroots organisations really sort of need your help to get the voices amplified. You know, we've got COP26 coming up soon. Can you, you know, just I think even yeah, just add your voice to something to say that we how we want to shape the future is super important. Um, you know, can you think about is it even something like your work? Is it a plastic disaster zone? You know, is your block of flats and people not recycling? You know, properly is the bin area just a joke? All the rest of it. Um, you know, can you sort of be the person that says enough is enough um, and speak to people to make positive changes, sort of wherever they are. Complacency will lead um, to politicians and businesses hoping that we've all forgotten about the plastic crisis and revert to the bad, bad old days. Um, so yeah, I do think it's up to all of us to create a plastic free world for future generations to be able to enjoy. Um, and so I hope these tips have spurred you on to do that and have made you think that it's not that overwhelming and that you might be able to do something. Um, thank you very much for listening. Here are all of our details. Um, for further tips on low waste living or to find how you can get involved with Plastic Free Hackman, you can find us here. So yeah, we have all the socials and things. You can email either myself or Daisy directly or hello at Plastic Free Hackney. Um, and this is an exciting QR code where you can join our mailing list. So all you have to do is scan that. Um, yeah. So I'm now going to stop sharing and see all your faces and hope they're not all in shock. I can't. Oh. Stop the share. <laughs> okay. Every, everybody should look very shocked. <laughs> <laughs> Very weird, I don't know how. Anyway, um, yeah, thanks for listening, guys. I hope that was useful. Um, we're now going to sort of hand you over um, to Rachel and Alice from Our Pledge. Um, and so I'm going to just let them introduce themselves. Um, yeah, thanks for listening. Hi, everyone. Thank you so much, Bettina and Daisy. That was epic <laughs> it's like save chat um yeah there was so many um fantastic recommendations and also a lot um that resonates with what um we're going to talk about so i think you've probably saved us some time as well because um we are certainly sort of singing from the same hymn sheet so i am now going to share my screen Uh, I just have to bring it up into present mode. Hopefully everyone can see that. I can only see Bettina, can you see it? You can see it, awesome. Um, okay, so yeah, so we're just gonna take a, a moment now just to introduce um, our pledge, which as Bettina said is myself and Alice here today. Um, and just to talk a bit about the work that we're doing to reduce plastic in Hackney and in Waltham Forest, neighboring borough. Um, and and beyond but that's where we're focusing um for this presentation in particular uh so yeah what is our pledge i expect you probably haven't heard of us um although i did recognize some names so nice to see some of you have maybe been to things that we've uh, run before um but yes yeah, so we were founded in 2019 um as a sustainability consultancy and fundraising platform and um, I'll talk a bit about how we work in more detail in a minute. But ultimately, our mission is to work with businesses and consumers uh, to help them live a more sustainable plastic free life. And we do see um, the, the connection between business and consumer as really key to making some changes just to build on exactly where um, Bettina finished the presentation. Um, you know, we are unfortunately, our power does lie with us, our um, consumer choices and whilst we shift from um, you know consumers to citizens and then beyond citizenship to or, or human citizenship to ecosystemic citizenship we need to kind of disrupt the consumer norms that we're part of now um, sort of accepting we are where we are and doing what we can to kind of interrupt um, our habits together so we believe that there's a lot that can be done um, from that space 
with that and also accepting that we do have to buy some things and um so what we want to kind of join together to bring choice to um closer to us basically to our local shops so we are here to encourage and support communities to understand and obviously sometimes it's very confusing as we've been talking about in the chat a bit you know how to be plastic free what do different different um terminologies mean um how do you become zero waste is that possible and so on so it's all about demystifying and de-risking um sustainable choices so that they become easy and accessible affordable and hopefully fun to buy and not a massive drag um why do we exist? Well, I really 100% don't need to show you this slide because um, Bettina and Daisy have nailed it. But yes, current consumer behaviour is damaging the earth. Um, and actually, Hugo um, Tagholm, I assume that's how you pronounce his name, I'm not sure. Um, but the chief executive of Service Against Sewage, you know, really highlighted that plastic pollution and climate change are these dual massive and interconnected issues that we have to tackle. They are they are very dangerous and damaging and um, and looming and so um, which can feel really overwhelming but actually one of the things that we find in all the conversations that we've had and the research that we've done over the past year and I'm sure you've probably felt this as well is that there's a big movement for positive change and there are lots of people getting behind this kind of realization um, I think the pandemic has kind of shifted perspective in some way um, and we have realised about things about supply chains, you know, even the big boat sort of made us realise, oh, yeah, things get made somewhere and then they get packaged somewhere and then they get delivered to us. And, you know, that the, that sort of awareness of um, the origins of things has been quite profound. Um, and also we've seen how consumer behaviour has, um, you know, mass production and fast fashion and all those things um, have really damaged uh, local independent businesses um, but actually we're in a real kind of phase of wanting to come back and fight back for independent businesses and for the planet and understanding that those two things can be really interconnected that buying local is part of um, buying with a conscious choice for the you know for the protection of the planet so I think there's a real there's a real movement that we're just starting to feel so we're really trying to tap into that um, I will also hopefully now play you a video that tells you a bit more about us and our work. Then I'll talk about some things in detail and then I'm going to talk about exactly what we're doing in Hackney. Um, I'm going to press this button. Theoretically, it should take us to a YouTube channel. And hopefully you'll be able to hear the sound. Come on, Internet, you can do it. I'm not getting any sound. You can't hear the sound? No. Nobody can hear any sound. Just me. Just you. Okay. Well, I'll just tell you. I think it's uh, easy enough to explain. I just wanted you to see some of the shops and businesses that we work with. And um, just to show you the kind of spectrum of um, clients that we have and some of the work we've done but I will send a link actually perhaps Alice you could put a link to um, that YouTube channel in the chat although you might not have it readily available to you but I'll make sure it gets shared um, so back into presentation uh, yeah so the way that we work so what what the video um, would hopefully have told you is that we work with um, all businesses so anyone who's interested in, in reducing their plastic waste. Um, and you'll see we kind of can go from a, a very plastic heavy um, shop through to like pet shops that are already doing little bits, fitness studio like you saw George there. Um, but it's all about uh, taking the heavy lifting away from business owners to help them move towards being plastic free. Because if businesses are more plastic free, then um, we as residents and citizens and consumers can more easily be plastic free. Um, so we kind of like trying to intervene to help and catalyze that transition. So the way that we do that is to obviously start talking to um, our prospective collaborators and that might be a business or it might be an individual who says, hey, I really love this shop, but 
you know, they're, they're not doing that much. And I think there could be more. And I think there's a few people who shop here who'd be behind it. So we'll sit down with the owner of that business and just start talking to them about what um, is the day to day uh, sort of journey of their business? What are they doing on a day to day basis? Where is plastic waste being produced? Where do they get their suppliers from? Who's their energy provider? Where are the pain points? And then just a, a general kind of overview of what is um, going on for them so that we understand the context that they're operating in. You know, most people who own a small business who own retail are really, really busy. Lots of people have families. Um, they are quite stressed. <laughs> so thinking about climate change and uh, new alternatives to sort of tried and tested products can be really overwhelming. So we're there to kind of, um, to uh, sort of soothe the transition and help um, make it feel a little less overwhelming and as I said just to do a bit more of the kind of work that um, maybe feels like something they should be doing but isn't something that is possible to do. We then um, and again we always talk about de-risking so we then tend to not always but we tend to do a quick customer survey which is a kind of launch pad for a conversation we speak to customers we do some in-depth interviews we'll share a survey monkey link you know do all the kind of bits and bobs to dig into what a local community might already feel about um, sustainability and uh, single use plastics and start to have a conversation. And that's a kind of door opener for saying, well, look, you know, we're thinking about maybe um, fitting a refill station or um, replacing some of these products or um, getting a milk dispenser. You know, what do you think? And then, and also that's a bit of a data gathering exercise so that we can um, understand who the um, customers and yeah, participants in that transition might be and start that conversation. Then we analyze that data. We look at what the business wants to do. We look at what the customers want to do and we create a kind of roadmap and say, actually, we think that you could do this quite easily. It's not gonna cost um, too much money and it's gonna be quite effective and here are your impacts. Um, and for some cases, if the business wants to be quite ambitious and it is going to cost a bit more money, then we have a crowdfunding um, platform embedded in our website. So we can own and run what is effectively a crowdfunding campaign where um, customers commit to buy single, um, single use plastic free or um, re refillable or renewable options, bulk options. So effectively, we're asking customers to say, you know, if we supply these things will you buy them and customers putting their money where their mouth is and saying yes absolutely if you bring these products to me here's my 20 pounds here's my 30 pounds here's my 60 pounds however generous people want to feel um, towards that item and that's for a voucher that can be redeemed once that product is in the store so um, customers are basically collaborating with the business to prove demand and provide cash flow up front so that um, these changes which can be a bit costly um, can take place much more quickly. Um, and then obviously at the end of that, we will hand over um, all the data to the shop so that they continue um, that relationship with their customers. Um, and just to kind of bring that into the, like, the real world, just to kind of make, give you a, a, a real world example, I'm just gonna talk you through this case study, uh, which um, is from a convenience store owned by Adrienne Nocken that you can see in this photograph here. This is them in their old shop. So um, this was my local mini market. I adore Adrienne Nocken. Um, if you've ever been in there, you know, you will probably adore them too. They have a really loyal um, following. They're very um, much part of the community. This is actually in Leytonstone. Um, and they had already become slightly aware of the climate crisis and were like, oh, maybe we were selling a lot of plastic stuff and their customers were going, oh, I think we're buying a lot of plastic stuff. There was a general level of awareness that there might be something here to be done. And so over two campaigns, um, they suggested um, options to their customers. The first thing they said was, hey, you know, if we built a refill station, would you buy refillable products? Like, would you spend money on pasta, rice, grains, um, laundry detergent? Um, uh, what else was in the first one? I think we had, yeah, like floor cleaner and that kind of thing. Um, and customers said, yes, we would. Here's, uh, here is our money. Um, we had a target of, I think, £5,000 for the first one. We raised £7,000. 
that was great. We installed the refill station with them. Um, and of course, as soon as we'd done that, sales were going up, people were coming in, it was a talking point. And everyone who pledged said, when can we do it again? Um, and the upshot of that was that Adrian Inokan actually expanded out of this shop into a new shop that was effectively um, funded by their community, by their, by their customers, and um, was all done in a way that de-risked the process for them and was a conversation with their customer base to say, would you like us to have refillable kombucha or would you rather that we did um, a, a beauty bar first or should we just stick with, you know, refillable tea and coffee? And so they were constantly getting feedback through these pledges, through these conversations that reassured them that, yes, actually, they could put down the um, deposit on the peanut butter machine because everyone's going to come in and buy the peanut butter. Uh, so and as you can see, they went from a really like basic convenience store. Um, they, they sell craft beers, which is one of their kind of USPs. But other than that, you know, it was very much um, kind of plastic heavy space, really. Um, and we reckon that over over a year they would have. Um, saved about 100,000 um, individual plastic packages from sales and they've had um, a significant increase and they also, I'm just getting my earring off because I'm conscious it's knocking against my microphone probably, um, they also found that they have massive uh, negotiating power with suppliers so they um, went from being quite a small shop that actually sometimes found it hard to kind of get people to supply to them because they were very small and further down the chain to going, hey, look, we've got um, all these people saying they want to buy this product, so you better bring it on. And also because they were getting a lot of attention, people were kind of um, being more flexible with them. So they got, you know, free PR and marketing and this inbuilt market research. And then, of course, these lovely customers who sort of now refer to the new shop as their shop. Um, and so that's a really good example of it working really well. Just to give you a kind of um, a snapshot of what we're doing at the moment, um, we had a bit of a pandemic induced break on campaigns because everything was so uncertain, uh, but we're back now and we're working with some clients um, in London and actually in the southwest um, of the UK. Uh, and actually, I haven't spoken very much about Alice, but Alice is here with us and I, I can't see, but I know Minu has been a part of this evening. Um, that's Alice's cat. But um, Alice came on board uh, at I think around December last year, um, off the back of a, a, a career in um, quite large scale events, actually. And I'd had a little kind of inkling that events maybe would, would be something I'd like to do. But Alice has kind of really come on board and brought um, a vision to what we're doing, which is effectively enabling us through events like this evening, through um, a series of events that I'll talk about in a minute, um, to, to share information. We're talking in the chat about sharing. And that's, that's it, you know, like we need to do this work and then tell other people how to do it and share it and um, work on this together because that's gonna uh, be the, the uh, momentum that we need to kind of uh, catalyze and um, make this movement or make this into a movement and make the movement into something that really makes change. Uh, so we've been doing running events and partnering with um, all sorts of people to get that work further, you know, further scene and get the, the the conversation going and out of that those events we publish guides where we say hey look we've had fantastic in, um, uh, ideas in the chat and this there was this idea shared and we'll put those on it all in a document so everyone has access to them after the event and we also support things like town teams and the uh, business recovery board in Waltham Forest so that we can make sure that sustainability is at the heart of like uh, COVID recovery. Um, and then we're also sort of innovating um, beyond the, pl uh, the platform we have at the moment. Uh, I'm just going to say this because I think it might be of, of relevance. We're doing a series of events in Waltham Forest, which is obviously uh, not in Hackney, but very close to um, and is part of our sort of uh, pandemic recovery plan. And actually, this comes back to something somebody said earlier. So we are running a plastic free kids fair. Um, so that was, somebody said that in the, the Mentimeter. And yeah, it's something that comes up time and again. So we are literally just finalising the details for that. So we'll be publishing information and that will just be an afternoon where you can drop in and find out about um, plastic free kids, uh, party ideas and party bag ideas and this, that and the other. We're doing workshops for young leaders. We're doing workshops on everyday actions. So actually the plastic free um, hackney uh, make your own products be a 
brilliant for that. Um, we are hoping to organize a zero waste expo to showcase all the range of um, plastic free um, retail options there are available for shops if they just want to have a go and you know just get a refill dispenser in or just get a water refiller in there um, we're going to make that happen talk about how to engage with policymakers. we're talking about cop 26 so how do we talk to the right people to get the right message to have an effect um, and then by christmas we can talk about having a plastic free zero waste festive fair uh, but none of that is as important as drum roll um, what I want to just talk about tonight um, as, a, as a soft launch, um, but we are collaborating with Hackney Council um, and we're super um, excited about this. Now, this is a very, um, as I say, this is a soft launch. This is a, a pilot term. This is not yet 100% nailed down. Um, so you are the first to know. Um, but we are absolutely delighted and very grateful to be working with Hackney Council to trial our campaign process with businesses in Hackney. Um, so trying to create a kind of route through um, the borough that connects um, local businesses who are pledging to reduce their plastic with customers who can support them because without the customers, the businesses are going to fall flat. So we need to showcase the businesses, make sure people know where they are, make sure people know what the options um, are that are available in those shops, make sure that we're not missing anything that residents are going, oh, I wish we had this and businesses don't know so that we can get that knowledge into the shops to go, God, you know, everyone wants to buy um, plastic free toothpaste and nobody's selling it around here. So that is going to be really good for business. Um, so really joining the dots between what residents want and what businesses want. Um, and as I say, collaborating together to, to make these changes. Um, I think the objectives are obvious and I've, I'm conscious that I've done a lot of talking and we want to have time for a Q&A. Basically, the objective is to reduce plastic waste and to like get some good vibes going in the borough around doing that and seeing change and seeing that trickle down change from if a business is reducing plastic and um, we as residents are able to buy less plastic packaged um, goods, then that means we're throwing less packaging away. So that is a win-win. And that goes back to Bettina's um, circular economy diagram there. Like we want to, we just want to be buying things that don't create waste. So we keep them in the economy um, in whatever format and um, zero waste buying is really a part of that. Um, I've talked about how he works, so I won't go into that too much. But what's very important to say is that we will be um, going out to businesses in the borough and saying um, that this is what we're doing and talking to them about it. Um, and so if you want to be a part of that or if you want to find out more, um, please sign up to our mailing list. And Alice, I know you do have the link for that, so you can pop that in the chat. You can follow us on social media. You can recommend shops that you'd like to see get support or talk to them about the scheme. Uh, you can join Plastic Free Hackney. So I think the link for that has already been shared. And also we are going to be um, expanding and looking for some um, support with our work. Uh, so we'll, we have some new roles coming up. We'll be looking for people to work with us um, in various capacities from marketing to event assistance. Um, so get please get in touch and we'll put our details in the chat and also in a um, in the document that we share afterwards I think Bettina already mentioned that uh, so hopefully that wasn't too whistle stop and if you have any questions we're really happy to answer them and thank you so much for being here and um, thank you to Plastic Free Hackney for having us thank you to Hackney Council for um, supporting us and um, speak to you all now <laughs> now in the chat go <laughs> <laughs> right um i have been taking some notes of some of the things that people have been talking about um we've got someone called andrew andrew matthews is a andrew are you still here ah hello um, hey rachel hey <laughs> so hey, andrew andrew's starting a reusable takeaway scheme for food and drink containers which is a very exciting thing yeah, thanks. Um, yeah, it's called um, Reuser. Uh, and yeah, it's basically to, I think we were talking earlier about how, um, you know, it's quite inconvenient to 
bring your own, well, it can be inconvenient sometimes, or you just are rubbish at remembering to bring your own cup or bring your own food box. And, um, you know, so this is basically a solution where you wouldn't have to bring it with you and you could just basically get uh, containers while you're on the go. You scan a QR code, get your coffee in the, in the Reese or coffee cup. And when you're done with it, you uh, return it back to one of the partner vendors. And we're talking with Hackney Council about maybe having some public drop site bins as well. And um, so kind of like trying to remove that decision between you know, convenience and uh, reuse, trying to kind of bring those together and, and offer a, yeah, just a convenient solution because we, we all need to be supporting local businesses and events and um, especially, you know, after COVID, a lot of them have had tough time and, um, you know, not, not going and supporting them because we would produce more waste shouldn't be, uh, you know, shouldn't be an obstacle that we face. That's, uh, that's very exciting, Andrew. This is something Bettina and I have been banging on about for a long time, thinking what we really want someone to start doing is some form of, you know, a reuse depot and, you know, imagine all of the businesses getting involved and wouldn't it be a lovely collaboration and we can't do it and there you are. So that's lovely. Yeah. And um, Judith, actually, who was on this, has been uh, working with me on this as well. And um, but yeah, we're, we're kind of targeting Broadway market for an initial launch and um, uh, just trying to nail down the first pilots. But Rachel and I, we, we need to catch up again and we need to finally catch up. <laughs> I was uh, literally like, I'm just uh, going to send you a message. <laughs> Yeah, we'll, talk, we'll, we'll, talk. we'll do that yeah. after, but um, it'd be great to have some sort of, you know, yeah, we could maybe work together to show the demand, you know, to some of these uh, prospective shops and stuff. So there are, there are lots of nodding heads. The people who aren't black squares are nodding heads at the moment, which is very nice. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, but yeah, um, he does also have any questions. Um, if they so, want... uh, Christina, is Christina still here? No. She may or she may not be here. Anyway, uh, Christina had made a, uh, a comment about um, bioplastics um, when we were talking about recycling and waste. And this is always a good moment to talk about the fact that um, all of those, those seemingly lovely options of um, it's not plastic because it's made from plant starch is, is, is really never a viable option. And that the the waste centers hate them because they can't be recycled. So when people put them in their recycling, they contaminate the plastic stream. Um, so people will then will say, what is it? So it's not, plant it's not plastic and it says it's made of plants. So I'll put it in my compost bin, but it's not compostable either. And uh, the, uh, the, the people at the anaerobic digestion unit are told uh, by the council to remove anything that looks like plastic and they're obviously not going to be sort of searching through every individual item saying oh well I think think that's not a plastic fork but possibly it is um, so actually the, the only place that they end up is in the bin in the residual waste um, at which point they're really I mean yes they haven't been made with fossil fuels but they have been grown on mm -hmm. land uh, that should be used for food production and often um, they're made from corn which is very water intensive um, and they're, they're funded it they're funded by um, the oil industry so they're, it's it's a very it's not even murky actually it's just awful <laughs> so 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 bioplastics no and it's kind of, it's a sad greenwash as well, because it's, you know, you get lots of businesses and they really are trying to do the best thing. And they've been sold the lie of the, of the vegware and the other things. And really, you know, if there was, if we could just sort of talk about reuse and kind of, you know, sort of things like that, that's where we need to be moving. It's just also substituting, it's that substituting one throwaway item for another throwaway item. And that's kind of what we need to stop doing. It's just throwing away the things. Um, Jordan, Jordan says that they cut them up and into little pieces to put in their compost. Well, I mean, I guess if you're home composting it, you could have a go. But generally how they work is that it's only, yeah, so it's a city compost. So, so the problem is that they have to be hot composted. Um, so home co composting is cold 
um, hot composting has to get to at least 65, 70 degrees, which is sort of steaming, um, which in theory, those products could go into the um, council collection waste, but because we're so bad at recycling anyway, if anything looks like it's going to be plastic and put into the food compost, uh, it's going to be automatically assumed that it is a contaminant. And there's currently only one dedicated place that um, processes them and it's up in Scotland. So then even if a company has a contract with, the, with a supplier like Vegware to um, process these items, uh, they've then got to be um, transported all the way to Scotland to then be composted. I mean, it's, it's completely ridiculous. Yeah. But note the frustration. Yeah. Can I just add to that super quickly? Because we've been doing a kind of research project on this as well. And there are so many terms like biodegradable or degradable or compostable and for the most part they all mean the same thing which is exactly what you're saying so they're all just really misleading terms there is a home compost um, stamp that does mean you can put things in your home compost for cold composting or in your food waste bin um, which is what we've been trying to source um, to support some shops because obviously there's so many plastic bags being given away still and actually, one thing I will say, many, many, many people don't realise that it's actually the law now for shops, any shops, not just supermarkets, to charge 10p per plastic bag. So if you want to do, um, if you want to kind of make that a point, you can, when you, if somebody tries to give you a plastic bag, first of all, obviously say no, but also remind them that they can be charging 10p per bag um, uh, if they if they want, well, well, they should. It's, I mean, legally, they, they are obliged to do that by the, by the law, though many, many people aren't doing that. Um, yeah, so just to say that. Muted. Uh, so, so um, I was muted. Um, Carol was talking about Oddbox and uh, how she, how they really wanted to do Oddbox, but uh, they were having a problem with having it delivered no. yeah so the problem is that um i moved to a flat like a complex where um they would have to ring the bell basically the, to get into the building um and we don't have a night concierge so all they can do is leave it outside the door which is right on the main street and that just doesn't make sense yeah i don't i mean i would i would definitely try giving the customer service a call to see yeah I mean I know they do deliver at night because wake up in the morning there's a box there but um I yeah you could you could see because they do have a window of time so maybe they could sort of do something where they could come when the concierge is there um but yeah, I mean no. as long as it's at a time where we're kind of awake they can ring the doorbell but I just don't want my maybe. flatmates to wake up because of it you know I mean, they did. I remember when I first started getting them, and I did. They did put a note on my account. I mean, they stopped doing it, and then it sort of kind of worked out what they didn't. It, I didn't need it anymore. But they did put a note on my account to knock on the door if they arrived before eleven o'clock or something. So maybe you could try something like that. Um, okay, I'll have a look. Thank you. But then there's also sort of, you know, they're probably where where are you live in. Are you in Hackney? Um, no, I'm in Tower Hamlets. Oh, okay. Um, I'm in Bow. Because there are sort of lots of local, like growing communities and lots of local sort of other sort of box schemes that you could try as well. Um, I can, I'll, I'll find out. I will ask the community of Hackney Gardeners to find, and we'll, we'll find out. We'll put it, it in sounds the good. Yeah, I used to go to Victoria Park Market on Sundays, but I moved away from the park and now it feels like it's a bit too far. Okay. So I'm I'm gonna I'm gonna fire through some of the the other things that in the Mentimeter uh, people were saying they were having difficulty um, finding plastic free. Um, so toothbrush toothbrush is quite there there are um, toothbrushes you can at most um, uh, health food shops um, they will sell bamboo toothbrushes. Um, they're quite easily accessible. I wonder if it was an electric toothbrush. That the person was finding so you're going to object go interject so i have also seen a, a bamboo electric toothbrush head i've seen that on instagram there so is even 
So Colgate have now started selling a bamboo toothbrush as well. So that's kind of made it more mainstream um, alongside all of their plastic ones. But yeah, so they're quite easy to find now. Yeah. Also, if you have an existing um, electric toothbrush, We Earth, I don't, well, Worth, W-E-A-R-T-H, do recyclable toothbrush, electric toothbrush heads, but they come with a bag that you can send them back to them in. So you don't have to throw your old toothbrush away if you have an electric toothbrush already. Excellent. Um, uh, cotton buds. Cotton buds. I don't think you can get plastic. I don't think you can get plastic ones anymore. I think I think they're out. They're illegal now. Yeah. One of the uh, things that are banned. There's a company called Last Swab that does those. Uh, I don't know if they're in America or in here too, in the UK, but... Everybody, they should all be doing it now because they they it's it's banned in the UK. That was one of the few things that have been banned. And I think um I think I think last swab the one that Andrew is talking about is the is that the reusable one? It keeps on being advertised to me, and I, I there's something slightly icky about washing. I don't know, like washing out my wax and I don't know, but you know, maybe there's not. You know, they, I'm getting I'm getting some responses of like. Some facial expressions of just like learn to love your earwax. Yeah. I mean this that that company last object, they've got like lots of different like reusable stuff, but I think they started with the swab. Yeah, I, I recently had my ears pierced and so I've been back to doing like the saline solution and the cotton buds. And I I really don't feel I could do a reusable cotton bud with that. But you know, maybe maybe I could have a go. Um uh, so skincare, we have said, so we've recommended Sheer Alchemy, who are, who's, so it's run by a local Hackney woman, and she's very nice. Local, isn't she? Do you not think, I think she's local. No, I don't think she is. Anyway. <laughs> <laughs> anyway. Um, but you know what, actually, you know that, so... I, I do find that sort of with cosmetics and beauty brands and things like that, you know, whether, whether, you know, with my cynical hat on, they're jumping on the green bandwagon and trying to do better, or they're just trying to do better. So I did, um, I do like to peruse in TK Maxx every now and again and see what's, see what they've got. And I did find that in Hackney Central in TK Maxx, I managed to come out with quite a lot of, well, just like soap. I mean, you know, like fancier soap instead of a body wash and like sort of, you know, like a face thing that was in a glass jar, you know, there's just more, I, I, I kind of had quite a good like little plastic free shop of just soap and shampoo and conditioner and even into dental sticks, you know, like the little flossy things. Yeah. The bamboo. Um, so yeah, they're kind of, I think, and obviously Instagram is a source. I think all you have to do is mention plastic free <laughs> beauty products in a room you know, with your phone in another room and then somehow you'll get an Instagram advert for it like the next day. That's, I don't know how it works. There's some sort of weird magic. I've turned off Siri, I've turned off everything and still my phone can read my thoughts. So just think about it and it'll come up on your phone. It'll come up in like a media feed somewhere like a creepy watcher. Um, I wanted to mention something to Rachel. Do you know, um, you were talking about the, um, the kids party like a plastic free kids party event do you know about the party kit network so i don't know about the, the party, party kit, network. kit network is a great thing um which i am part of but that is not why i'm <laughs> mentioning it um so it's basically uh it's a database where um loads of different um parents and sometimes oh. like um parent teachers associations are sharing um boxes of um, uh, like low cost um, cups and plates and bowls and reusable stuff. And sometimes that includes decorations that you can, um, you can rent out. Um, so I set it up at, at my kids primary school and so you can borrow the kit for free um, and then you just return it clean. And it's just, it's one of those really simple solutions that you know because it's only a few years when kids like having lots of parties and then they sort of slim it down um 
well, my children do. Um, but uh, but it's but it's another very good resource of just of sharing things, and also to say that um, the library of things to check whether everybody knew about the organisation library of things. The fact that um, the one in Hackney Wick is now opened, and the one at um, in Dalston at the um, CLR Library will be opening, I think, at the end of the summer. What was so, the, what was the the other sharing thing that you, the power tools? Oh, um, yes, I think it was called. Let me just have a check. I think it was called Street something. Um, so I find next door quite helpful for borrowing stuff. Um, ne next door is useful so long as you never talk to anybody about traffic. Um, street bank. Um, so there's another slightly kind of less active network called streetback.com and then you can register something like you know if you've got a ladder that you're happy to lend to people then they can find it on that and then you know book it um, and, and again it's it's you know there's no no money changes hands library of things there is a small hire fee I haven't used it yet but I'm excited um, yeah, and I, you know, like in a in an ideal world, wouldn't it just be that you've got two ladders on the street and everybody borrows one, and and then you've made community friends? It's just like oh, yeah. There's a funny statistic about drills that says um, like every drill that like everyone has a drill, but we all use it only like ten minutes in its whole entire lifetime. So you only really need one drill for the whole community. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, I, I told that statistic to somebody and they said, oh, but then that make, makes me think, how long does every drilling um, project take? But, you know, maybe maybe it was just moments, but moments that the drill was in the wall. And I was like, yeah, possible. <laughs> um, are there any other questions? I've, I've, I'd like I'd like someone to go on, somebody send us a really hard one. Like a... You're never going to solve this one. One. Is there an online men's clothing rental platform? Oh, there must be. It's all it's all female focused. Most well, most. <laughs> also, yes, old school. But I was listening to the radio yesterday, and actually, there was a um, somebody has done a study on what was the best form of um, clothing, like like rental buying secondhand, like just not buying something, all the rest of it. And they did it on jeans, but I guess it can kind of be applied to other things as well. And actually the rental, um, the rental sector came out worse in terms of carbon emissions and things like that, because effectively, because transport is such a huge part of that, mm. that sort of life, you know, the emissions part of it. So it was all that kind of the dress coming back, the dress going out, you know, whatever it is, that side of things um actually caused huge amounts of emissions so actually you probably don't want to be renting. you want to be just not buying anything new or wearing those jeans or whatever until they fall apart yeah yeah and also yeah wearing things a lot of times like many yeah yeah Ooh, that's a good got, you own is the one that you already own we've got um we've got some good challenges um so along the medical line, so medications and other medical devices and also tattooing. Oh. These are things I have not thought about. Um, you can, oh, any, any plastic free options are the corn plastics, I believe. Is there anything better for tattooing? Gosh, I've got no idea. I mean, beeswax uh, is used for the cling film substitute, right? Yeah, what would you want to be? Well, I don't know. Yeah. Um, Over your new tattoo. <laughs> maybe you can make an exception for that. Yeah. I mean, that's the um, thing with the medications. And I mean, it does feel ridiculous that we don't, that now all medicine comes in those little packets. There is a, I think, Tetra Pak or similar do a return. <laughs> Do they have a look? Yeah. Um, but I can't, you know, this is where, you know, when, when I get the sort of like, you know, why are you trying to reduce plastic? Like it's saved our lives. And I do kind of, it's where I'm like, yes, I'm not saying let's get rid of the MMR machine. And, you know, I think that's where I'm like, if we only use plastics for medical benefit, then I'm happy with it. You know, it's sort of, yeah. but I just think that we need to stop buying bottles of Coke. 
and you know like all the sort of stupid things like I would get rid of all of that stuff and keep the medical facility <laughs> yeah medicine. you're you're absolutely right there is a terror cycle scheme yeah, yeah. thing i mean i just don't know i guess yeah. we don't i don't know if this was mentioned during the grocery thing but we'd probably be remiss to not talk about it but the um just loop like terror cycles yeah. company loop like that's they're the ones who are like partnering with the, the big grocery store chains like Te i think they have tesco partnership tesco. Yeah, um, but well, so yeah, they I, have to pay like fifty quid up front or something. Or yeah, but yeah. They um. They, so Loop Loop just sent me an email actually. Um. So Loop are now like they're fully integrating with Tesco. Um. So Loop for anyone who doesn't know about what it is, it's um when you buy your online shopping at Tesco, there are some products that they will deliver to you in a reusable, refillable container. So you have to put down a deposit for the container. And then at the end of kind of you wanting to use the system, you get your money back. And so I was quite excited about doing it because I was like trying something new um, and not buying something new, obviously. Um, and uh, I was really disappointed because um, I think I think it would work really well if you will if you weren't going to change any of your shopping methods and you got a little you got extra money to spend and I felt that they were kind of like trying to kind of net maybe the sort of waitrose bracket of customer um, because the things that were available were quite expensive but. Um, you had to, it, I realized that it was gonna make me buy more stuff than I actually wanted to buy. Um, and I was gonna have to have a lot of space to store those things. It also arrived in a really big container that you have to store. And it was being transported back to Nottingham. And the, the whole sort of, although it, it's like, yes, it's a good system to be, looking at it really just compounded for me that like if i'm living somewhere like london and i've got lots of local facilities to be using they are so preferable to to loop um and and it was also just like this really big yeah this big big container came and i only had like eight things in it and this giant box oh giant box that had come from nottingham that was going to be back going back to nottingham um which had just got like my sort of my refillable smarties in it and <laughs> uh, there's so, so many local zero waste shops or just local shops like doing plastic free stuff like you might as well yeah support. like even if it was even if we were getting stuff with packaging I would still want to support those over like Tesco anyways right it just um yeah. Here's a, here's a couple other ones actually. I'll just put in because they're relevant to us. So zero, they're this one. They're delivering from, they're partnering with uh, zero waste shops and then delivering um, like their zero waste goods and they're yeah. serving Hackney, Islington, and Tower Hamlets. And they they're actually the people who um, get loose use. And so get loose in Hackney is probably the most economic. Um, uh, refill shop if anyone doesn't know about it it's a really nice um, shop that's set up as a charity so that they it's all run by volunteers to keep their loss their costs as low as possible um, and uh, it's part of Hackney City Farm um, and they use zero for their deliveries yeah and then this one is called Circla, and it's for all you ladies out there in beauty products. Uh, so it's a reuse that they just focus, I think, mostly on beauty products, but um, and like household stuff, but like zero waste stuff. So it's another one to check out. Um, on going back to takeaways, actually, there's also Too Good to Go, yeah, uh, which is a good way of um, using up. Uh, whatever's left at the end of the day for takeaways at low prices so it doesn't necessarily solve the packaging um, issue but it does mean I've, that I've, I've been talking with them and they're they just have a clear corporate directive to not like mess around with the packaging but like that could change in the future but yeah. uh but uh but that's yeah. a different it's a different issue it's a food food waste issue, but yeah exactly 
exactly. Um, yeah. Arguably a bigger issue. Yeah. They're both they're both big issues. Yeah. All the issues. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, There's too many. There's too many. And on on the medicine one, I mean, this is a completely uh, left field thing, but the NHS is a massive. Um, it generates a lot of emissions, and my partner works in anaesthetics, and uh, he's been doing a project to reduce carbon emissions from anaesthetic gases. So there are all these different um, starting points for where waste comes from, and if you know about, so that's just a shout out to anyone who's interested, who works in the NHS, and who might want to take on it. This is a project that's rolling out um, to to reduce um, emissions because yeah, there's so many um, emissions that are. Uh, created through operations and they and that can be changed but that's a completely different thing but just because it was asked I thought oh, I was saying in case there's anyone from the NHS here who might want to yeah, speak to my partner about that she's an anaesthetist as well and she's sort of at home she she's like really careful and tries to sort of you know live like low waste and all the rest of it but then she gets to work and she has to put her like work hat on yes she ignore it because she said she sent me pictures before and she's like this is just one small thing we, and it's just like really it's crazy yeah well, if she there's just there is a project where you can basically just do a switch for different gases and it will reduce the carbon emissions of, of operations by about two thousand percent. It's amazing. But anyway, that's a completely separate but I'm glad I mentioned it because there's a link. <laughs> Thanks, Medoa. Thanks. Yeah. Um should we um should we pop the polls out? Yes, that's a good point, actually. Sorry, we should have done that earlier. That's annoying. Um, there's just a couple of anonymous, well, one poll with a few questions. It's anonymous. Um, so if you would like to just fill it in, we would really appreciate that. It just helps us. It helps us with the money. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, Asking the people for the money, it's helpful. Um, so yeah, thank you for coming, guys. Um, I hope you enjoyed it and found it interesting and learned something new. Um, and yes, we have another workshop, which you can basically put in the chat. We've got our next workshop coming up in September. Um, which um, which one's the first one? Cleaning toiletries or cleaning products? Cleaning. Cleaning products. Make your own plastic-free cleaning products and low-cost cleaning products. Um, if you'd like to sign up for that, we would like to see you there. Um, great. Um, um, and I'm also going to put in the chat the link to um, if you want to join our mailing list. And then you can read our brilliant emails. Daisy is a MailChimp extraordinaire. Mm -hmm. Oh, thanks for listening. Have I put the poll up now for you? Can everyone see the poll? Yeah. And yeah, any questions, if anybody, you know, wants to get in touch at all, if they're struggling with anything, then yeah, feel free to email us at any time. Oh, thanks, Alain and Carol. Um, and we have got, we've got our next um, pollution pitch. Um, Next Sunday, the 24th, I want to say. A couple of Sundays. Yeah. Last Sunday of the month. Last Sunday of the month. Yes. So, yeah, if you filled in the feedback poll and you feel like you want to go. <laughs> <laughs> and then if you filled out the feedback form and you feel like you want to go, and you want to do something else really nice, then you could just like pop in a little sentence saying, hello, Hackney Council, this was amazing. Please do it again. We learned so much. And that's really helpful for us too. Isn't it, Manuela? <laughs> <laughs> Manuela's, Manuela's very quiet. <laughs> you enjoyed it, Manuela. Yeah, yeah there you are. <laughs> yes, indeed. <laughs> Great. Hi. <laughs> um, Manuel is a very wonderful member of the Hackney Council Waste and Recycling Team and um, 
yeah you know i think we're lucky to live in a in a place where the the people who deal with our waste and recycling are really committed and passionate and understand about the importance of it rather than just empty the bins so. yes here here thank you Mamela. oh yeah we can save the chat you can save the chat good point sorry guys i had the kids around <laughs> thank you very much for everything Thanks. Thanks. Inspiring as usual. Bye. <laughs> Bye. Thank you. Bye. Cool. All right then. So. Um, yeah. Yes. Go. Go. No. No. I'm just gonna. I'm gonna take off. But uh, lovely uh, talking with you guys. And thanks for putting this on. It's great. Let's cool. catch up. Where, another... where are you based, Andrew? Uh, Lower Clapton. Oh. I'll yeah. see. See you around. See you on the street. <laughs> yeah. Well, Lea Pisserie is. Great, my yeah. ex girlfriend lived basically across the street from it, right on that um, Glen Arm Road. So I got lots of things from there. Yeah, uh, I hope in your own container for ten percent off. <laughs> yeah, I feel like I was normally just getting wine <laughs> or, or bread. <laughs> they have really good pastries. Too.